RESA offers two different types of grid systems in order to draw in elements such as beams, columns, and walls. The first is the drawing grid represented by this light gray grid in the background. The drawing grid can be easily and quickly manipulated to provide snap points exactly when they're needed and where they're needed. This is used very much on the fly similar to things like construction lines in CAD. By contrast, RESA also has the project grid, which is a more permanent grid system intended for building type structures in order to lay out columns and walls that are spaced at regular intervals. To access the project grids, the best way to go to that is through the project grid generator, which is this button on the toolbar here. In the project grid generator, I can lay out how my grid will be laid out along the z-axis and x-axis. These are the global axes. As you can see for the z-axis, we've set it to be 5 increments at 25 feet on center, whereas with the x-axis, using a combination of commas and ats, we've been able to lay out a more complex grid system, which would match more realistic building type structures where everything isn't spaced at exactly the same distance. We can call out a skew angle here. In this case, we'll leave that at 0 so that we have a grid that's orthogonal with the global x and z-axis. Once a grid is set up, you can use the Apply button to preview that grid, as shown here. And when I click Apply, you'll see on screen the grid system is laid out here. Now I can hit Undo if this isn't what I wanted to do, or I can hit OK in order to create this grid system as a permanent part of my model. Now in this case, after hitting Apply, I realize that this grid system is laid out in the opposite direction that I would want it to. So I'm going to hit Undo, and I'm going to change the X and the Z increments here so that we can get a grid system laid out along the opposite axes. So here by clicking Apply, I get that grid system. Alternatively, I could generate a arc and spoke system by going to the Arcs tab of the Project Grid Generator. Here, if I hit undo for my orthogonal system, I could set up a grid system that goes from 0 to 180 degrees with th 3 increments at 20 feet on center radially and 7 spokes. By choosing that, when I hit apply, we can see what sort of a grid system we're going to have here. Now maybe I would want to hit undo and drop that down to 6 spokes and hit apply to compare it. So we can see how these different settings affect the model without having to commit to a given grid system. I'll now go back to the lines tab and apply the original grid system that I wanted. Once I hit OK, this grid system has now been created in my project's grid spreadsheet, which is available here under the data entry toolbar. If I click under project grid, we see here this grid uh, spreadsheet is going to give me all of my coordinates for my grid systems. And this will allow me to move them rather easily. For example, let's say that grid lines number 1 and 2 don't go up as far as grid lines E and F. Well, I can actually pull 1 and 2 down by modifying their X coordinates. So if I take a look at grid line D's X coordinate right here, we can see it's 75. Well, I can now come to grid line number 1 and tell it that its end coordinate is 75. And when I do that, we can see it pulls the grid down, similar to number 2. Now I could also pull grid lines E and F in in the same way. By taking a look at the Z coordinate for grid line 3, which is 50, I can go to the start coordinates for F and E under Z and set those to be 50. Now we have an L-shaped grid system. I can also control where the grid line bubbles are shown. For example, perhaps I only want the bubbles on the bottom and on the left side. So that would be considered the start for all of these. In the here, I can highlight all of these cells and use the fill block command under the right click menu and leave this as blank and hit OK and that will blank out or get rid of the check boxes here, getting rid of my bubbles at the top and on the right side. This allows me to more clearly see how my grids are without having all the bubbles in the way.
In addition to this, in the Project Grid spreadsheet, I can manually create grid lines. So I can just hit Enter and add in a whole new grid system however I would like to. So in this case, we could say maybe negative 100 and positive 100 here for the coordinates. And we'll put this right up at 35 feet. And so now we have this grid laid out right here just based off of simple start and end coordinates. In addition to this, I can modify my grid system by using the double click on the grids. If I exit the project grid spreadsheet and come out to the model view, here I can double click on a grid line. Let's take grid number four for example. And when I double click on grid number four, we see we can adjust a number of different parameters on here. For example, if I wanted to skew project grid number four, I could edit one of its Z coordinates here and so if I make this coordinate 70 instead of 80 and hit OK, now we have a skewed project grid in here. I'm going to hit undo to go back to the basic grid system here. Now let's presume that we want to widen the bay between numbers 4 and 5. I'm going to use my distance measurement tool right now to measure this distance, that being 30 feet between grids 4 and 5, and now let's bump that out to 40 feet. In order to do this, what I'd like to do is move all of the grid lines from number 5 and on up over to the right by 10 feet. So I'm going to double click on grid line number 5 and I'm going to say move lines and we're going to move those by positive 10 feet. And when I hit OK, number 5 and all of the other grids that are parallel to it get shifted over to the right by 10 feet. I'll now exit out of the number 5 grid line and come up to the F grid line. I'm going to double click on that. I want to move that down 7 feet. So I'm going to choose move lines and now I'm going to say negative 7 feet and hit OK and we can see that that now shifts all of the other grid lines relative to each other. In addition to this we also have the ability to create parallel grid lines. For example, if I wanted to create a line halfway between grid lines E and F, I would hit OK and come out here and measure the distance between these two, which is currently 25 feet. Then I would double click on grid line E and say create parallel lines. And now I can tell it to create a parallel line called E.5 that is a distance 12.5 feet away from E. When I hit OK, this new grid line is automatically created. Now I hit OK in here and we can come in and clean up any of these project grids exactly the way that we need to simply by doing a math operation. For example, on grid line F, if I want to move that down 12 and a half feet, if I only want to move grid line F and not the others, I would do that through the spreadsheet here by highlighting these X cells right here, right clicking and saying math on block, and here I would say subtract 12 and a half feet from that. This moves grid line F without shifting all of my other grid lines. Once I have the grid lines in place, I can now use these as snap points to draw in things like columns and walls. And so this allows me to lay out my structure however I need to, uh, having quick and easy snap points that I can also reference both visually in my model and through things like the column naming, where now these columns are referred to as column E4 and E5 so that we can pick them out exactly where they belong. These are the project grids in RISA.